Hello and welcome to Toffee TV. Today I've, well, I don't know whether this is a business with Blaine or whether we're just talking about football, but today we've got Rob with me from the Fans Forum. Now Rob's been on the Fans Forum, what, two years I think you said, Rob? Two years, yeah. We'll do the accent correct. in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rob's been on the Fans Forum two years and in the last month or so you have become the chair. Yes. So that means you've been through the election process for being on the forum itself and then I guess, because it's the way most best practice does, then the forum members themselves choose who their chair is going to be. Yeah? Correct, John. Yeah. And there's an election process yeah. happening now. Yeah. So we'll do the accent in, in a minute. <laughs> Just give the audience a little bit of a praise of what's going on with the timetable for the election and why you would encourage people to, uh, to apply. Yeah, first of all, John, thanks for having me on on Toffee TV. Um, yeah, so we're looking for applications at the moment. I know we've had really good response so far, better than last year, to the uh, to the request. So if, if you go on the official website, you'll find the news stories there or go on any of the sort of social media timelines um, and you'll, you'll find all, all the information there. Just fill out a form, some basic questions, put some questions there that are relevant, like, um, what's your favourite good or some memory because we all know <laughs> leaving and then about the new stadium what would what aspect are you looking at more is you as an individual looking for not necessarily better view and things like that but really the infrastructure and what's going on there so we do change it every year and we look to make it relevant and fresh um, and then uh, the voting closes next Monday so then we uh, then it comes across to the fans forum because the club take all the applications in comes across the fans forum we then look at all the applications put it down to quite a large shortlist and then start interviewing and then it'll go to voting stage after that. So we're, we're looking at completion around, it'll be around the first home game of the season, the Brighton game, around that, just after that, okay. it'll be completed. Right. So if, um, if I get this right, so you, you're going to complete, sorry, the, 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 the voting will open and yep. all fans with a client number or whatever they're called yep. these days can all vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and then you will shortlist to some criteria and then you'll presumably do some interviewee type things and then try and have the new member or members in place in yeah. time for the it works a little bit the other way around so we we uh we look at the applications we kind of score them i think it's a bit unfair to say it like that yeah. but we do and then we we go into interviews so we interview people to try and make sure that what they've said in the, the forms and what they've said previously you know is, is all good and we make sure that they can attend meetings and and do everything like that because that's really important at the end of the day but they don't have to be in person you can do them remote so we have international fans yeah yeah. yeah yeah we have international fans on the forum or if you're stuck at work we can do it in your workplace or whatever then that's absolutely fine um, and then it goes into voting and as you say that's completely open anyone who's got a customer number can vote um, and that process will be around the, the home game and we'll be doing some work with uh, Everton and possibly the fan zone on the day of the home game to promote that and advertise that because it will be live um, when that first home game uh, is yeah, on the Yeah, I, I mean, you talk about international members, you've already got members yeah. on, on the forum that are in the US, the ones I know, yeah. for example. Does that mean that your meetings with the club are on Zoom as well, so that the international members can join? Yeah, so they're all on Zoom, so probably everyone knows Tony Sampson quite well, who's yeah. chair, obviously mm. based in Chicago, but obviously originally from, from Liverpool. So, yeah, he, he, he's been on there, and we've got, we got another member from America, and we've got another member from the Netherlands. So, yeah, it's, it's a completely international, and as I say, if you're busy yourself and you can't make in-person at, at the offices, then you can uh, Zoom in anyway, and they're always available for that. And that's ad hoc meetings as well, because we have our standard monthly meetings with the club, but then sometimes they'll say, we want to have a meeting about this because we want to get views on this. So they're always Zoom. Uh, so all the meetings available. with the club are on Zoom? On Zoom, but you can go in person. Yeah, to yeah. The, that's to the, what I mean. Yeah, so yeah when, they're all on Zoom. When so, the club are on Zoom, yeah. it might be in a room at the Royal Lava Building where yeah. you're all there. Yeah, yeah, we're all in the same room and then uh, there's projection, everyone can see everyone. So, you know. We have a global audience, right? Yeah. And so, and, and if anything, it's quite possible that some of our overseas uh, um, viewers are more passionate or as, at least as passionate as local yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. And so it would be important for them if they're thinking about it, you think, well, I'm 5,000 miles away, it's not going to work, yeah. but it, it, it can. Yeah, and that's a question, probably the question we've had most since the applications have yeah. opened about overseas well, I know fans. Jeff's promoting people. <laughs> yeah, so, well, yeah. Jeff's saying, but you, you talk about Jeff, but his experience, he, he works in sport, basically. Yeah. He works in journalism, he, yeah. where he knows stadium infrastructure. Because yeah, yeah. in Cincinnati, where they've just had, I think all their stadiums got redeveloped and got mm. a new stadium and everything 
everything like that. So to have that sort of, um, you know, knowledge of, of that sort of thing as we go towards a new stadium is excellent. So, yeah, we, we don't really, it doesn't matter where you are as long as you can kind of make the meetings. Um, they're always usually around 6 p.m. UK time, so you know, as long as you can kind of work that into Once your time schedule. East Coast, for example, or <laughs> tea time in, yeah. in, in the Far East. Yeah, again. yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so far it's worked really well, and to be honest, um, all, all the international forum members have, all, have been pretty much there okay. at every meeting. Oh, that's so, cool. All yeah. Right. So let's get to the really important stuff. Yeah. Um, you don't sound like you're from Liverpool. I'm not, no. <laughs> so, so there's no there's no bad route to being an Evertonian, but there's no. lots of interesting ones. Yeah. So just tell us how, why are you an Evertonian. You sound like you're from North London or something. So. Yeah, yeah. I was born in London, but I uh, grew up just outside. Uh, for those that know the M1 quite well, Junction 14, the Newport Pagnell. Um, you know the services. Yeah, yeah. Um, had a bit of free reign really with family. Some family follow football, but not not really massively. And then uh, always love the colour blue. 86 Lineker Cup final even though we lost um, and then it just grew from there basically my first game was the last uh, wish it wasn't the last league championship winning season for 86 87 went to Watford away I think it was in March 87 uh, we lost <laughs> but uh, Adrian Heath scored my first live Everton goal so um, yeah and then I, I saw Everton quite a lot in away games at Luton Watford some London venues before I even made journey up to Goodison but um, I've actually known this area and city really well since you 90. live up here now don't you I live up here now but I came up here at uni in 1997 so to just to see that glorious uh, relegation or... last night <laughs> was it Liverpool or one of the others which uni did you uh, Liverpool it? Hope so okay. the one uh, in Chilwell, okay, um, cool. Taggart Avenue. So yeah, really uh, love my time up here. Always said I'd love to come back. This is my third time living up here now. So, uh, stay, but always follow. Stay this time. Always follow. Always follow. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. Stay this think time. I will. Um, and yeah, just uh, loved everything about following Everton and uh, you know and uh, the people you go with and everything. I've been fortunate to go to quite a lot of the European aways. You know, <laughs> don't want to say certain words like a certain. Um, person but um yeah great great times great journey and love the football club and uh now in a position to help fans as much as possible with the forum good one and helping the fans is, yeah surely is what the fans forum is all about isn't it really yeah exactly uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so what are the plans for the year as a not you yeah. but as the forum itself yeah and if in, in your answer you can try and give a view because there's going to be lots of people out there going you know yeah fans forum pa who cares right yeah and, and, and certainly Everton are much better with our fan representation, be it the Fans Forum or the Fan Advisory Board, yeah. than many other clubs. Clearly room for improvement. So A, what you think you're going to try and achieve for fans in this last year at Goodison, without referencing all the heritage events, <laughs> yeah? Um, and how you can make that engagement get the fans, whatever that means, um, accepting that the Fans Forum and its sister or brother in the fan advisory board are the de facto fan representatives rep representatives yeah, yeah. right what, what what's on what's on the agenda that's quite a long question that's it right. is that's, it's all too much it's all too much no i mean a, I, hopefully it's a really long, to be honest long, I, long I answer think, as well to be honest before i joined the forum two years ago i don't think i really heard of the forum and knew well, exactly what they, example, what yeah. they did yeah, yeah. um but then um when i saw the applications and uh because I do uh, run toffees in London, supporters club as well. Got to know, obviously, the the sort of, as you say, the fab was just about starting then, mm. um, and the, the fans forum, and then kind of added, oh, if I, I did go in for it, would I get people with back here? And because of what I'd done with toffees in London, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, go for it, Rob, go for it. And I did, and I got to know, um, obviously, the, the people, the, the, the chair at the time, Tony, who, who just talked about really well, and it sounded something, I thought you had a lot of time at, at, at that time, in terms of um, uh, family and work to, to really get into it and really have time. And our plans for this year, probably the biggest plans that Forum will ever have, because we're leaving our home, we're leaving Goodson Park, mm. um, and the understanding of everyone's going to have particular memories or things and a lot of people saying they're going to take screwdrivers and <laughs> to take seats out in the last game and everything. Although now we know there's events going to be after the last game. Um, which obviously will be really exciting to see the details of that as and when they come out. And we we kind of, if anyone's thinking like, oh, I want to apply for the forum, but do you really have, and I think this is the case of 
do the club just tell you what happens or do you have an input? Mm. We've already had meetings about certain things, can't go into them, but where they will ask our point of view and what do they think and how is the best story to tell about certain things that are coming up in the, the last season of Goodison. Um, we're even going to change the product um, project group, sorry, this year to include a Goodison legacy mm. type of group, which uh, before it's kind of all encompassed on a match day, but we're still going to have match day, but we're actually going to do a Goodison legacy project group um, where that will encompass everything to do with the events that obviously have already been put out and the ones to come, but also like making sure that most fans have an opportunity over the season. We know the last game, the last home game, um, which at the moment Southampton, but obviously we know how that it works, it could change. But we know that last game is going to be massive for everyone. But I think over the season, we've got to make sure that there's opportunities for people, not just on match days, but outside of that, which it was pleasing to see they did some different types of tours and that at the end of last season. Mm. So things like that, we really have to... I think the club know it, but it, it, they, they always do listen to us about the best ways to go about it. And then our ideas and some of those ideas, as I've seen over the last couple of years, do come to fruition and do come out that have originated from the fans forum. I mean, the 1878s basically grew from the fans forum. You think so? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, the chair last year, Barry, he basically was the bridge between the club and the 1878s initially to get that sort of started and get that going the coach greetings not last season obviously but the season before the fans forum had to get the club to agree to do certain things to the planning and the police obviously knew about it before so there are things that we've in the two years i've been there that i know have been you know ideas or what and the, the club have with as i say provisions with the health and safety aspects and the police and things like that and these obviously leaving goodison will have a lot of um we know a lot of people are going to be interested in coming over internationally, locally. Mm. Um, people who maybe have had to give up going to the game for certain reasons, but obviously have a real a special affinity to coming to Goodison Park. So it's going to be a massive season, but of course, on the other side of that, we've got the new stadium as well. And we know that it sounds like the handover will happen in December. Uh, so we're going to be juggling between Goodison Legacy leaving there and then the new stadium at Bramley Moor and making sure that everyone's aware of the changes and how it's going to be a little bit more different. We all know how it's going to be different, I think, in terms of visually and we can see it all now coming together now that the, the, the build's sort of now finishing. But obviously we know that there's numerous things on a match day that people... We want to know how it works, how that's going to do. So we're basically going to be juggling those things at the same time, as well as the other things that we always sort of deal with on uh, match days, retail, um, environmental. Um, we don't like to really say about it, but, you know, sort of anything uh, marginal groups. So we were the first Premier League side to sign up with her game too, etc. cetera, um, which again was a forum sort of initiative to get that through really quickly and the club supported that. So all all in all, it's going to be probably the busiest season the fans forum could well have <laughs> yeah, in, in terms of fan engagement and fan, as you say about engagement, yeah. it, it's going to be busy. So what we need to make sure is that all avenues uh, are open uh, where we can maybe communicate in, in every way possible to make sure the information is getting out there. Yeah, I, th I think historically what's happened um, with the fans forum and perhaps it's where the perception of, of the relationship with the fan base comes from yeah. is it's pretty effective whether it's the club or the fans forum or those together are effective at communicating outwards yeah i.e if you will the club through the fans forum to the fans yeah it's not clear to me how you do it the other way around yeah so how how, how are you going to do that because historically you haven't done that very well at all right so you use the word engagement, which is not communication. It's a bit more interactive than that. So if you represent the fans, particularly in maybe a critical year, but yeah. in every year, how are you going to improve the engagement so that when you speak to the club in your meetings or yeah. even in the little side sessions you have, or maybe even an executive meeting where you're you and someone really seen at the club have a quiet one-to-one -one. I need to yeah. explain this to you there's too many tickets on the lower Gladys that are going to tell so what are we going to do about it type of you know yeah off the recordy type stuff how are you going to know you are truly representing the views of the fans if you don't engage with them in a manner that allows them to give you the feedback 
Yeah, I mean, we, we engage with them a lot. We engage with them not just in the meetings. There's, there's all what I think. Now the fans I'm talking about, not yeah. the clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah but we, we always find an issue. I dealt with one this morning to, <laughs> straight away on, on uh, social media this morning to do a membership uh, for someone, for their daughter, you know, and we deal with issues all the time. And to be fair, the club, I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're doing this off our own backs. This, is, this isn't our job, so this isn't our that. Mm, the club absolutely. do. I think people the club can, the club, that, yeah. the club can only... Um, tell us and sometimes they can't give us the answer straight away they have to go back and obviously speak to other people but we have had um, obviously there's been a lot of turmoil back of house at the football club as we know over the last couple of years but we have had Richard Kenyon in a meeting last season mm. you know and we have had people where we can put maybe more direct questions and get mm. the answer straight away um, but yeah we're always open so any feedback we get from fan bases I run supporters clubs, so I get it from supporters clubs. We always then put them on the agenda for the meeting, and then we always do the actions from the last meeting to try not to let it just go quiet and let it die off. So we, we will always try to do that. And it's about opening up in, in different ways, I think, as well, in terms of how the meetings have resulted and what is the feedback from the club to then get that back to the fans. Mm. Um, although I think that has been uh, done over the last couple of years. I think there's various ways... Mm. Uh, different ways we can do that and I've got some ideas maybe to like utilising guys like yourself and podcasts maybe and things like that to really sort of do it in a more manner where if you're not on a certain social media platform you don't get to see the feedback or mm -hmm. you, everyone kind of knows the minutes are on the club website but does anyone really go on the club website and dig in and go to the minutes on the club website so it's all about why is it the club website why isn't it on your own website well as i say we're not we're we're not given any money to do the fans the forum we're not pay for job. it but you could still have your own website couldn't you? yeah i mean yeah we can have our own website um and that's something maybe i'll We'll, we'll ask for. I mean, we have our own social media channels. But, um, yeah, that's a bit easier, yeah, I suppose. But yeah, because yeah. um, a lot of people now, obviously, we know that the website and obviously when you we're talking about the applications for the fans forum or anything like that, that obviously does go through the website and you have mm. to go into the website and everything like that. But as we know, there's so much information now on, on pretty much any website mm. that you go on. It's quite difficult to then see where we are. And obviously in our... In the section we're on the website, you've got the Fan Advisory Board, you've got the Heritage Society, you've got Disability mm -hmm. Support Association, you've got a lot of things there for people to look at and, and do that. But yeah, having our own website, but there, it's a question of time and have we got to update that and make it relevant and the frequency mm -hmm. of it is is yeah. something... Uh, I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I, and I, I guess what I would say is Shareholders Association has its own website. Yeah. Heritage Society has its own website. Yeah. Uh, the FAB has its own website. Yeah and the de facto representatives of the fan base doesn't. Yeah. It's about perception. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right yeah. or wrong. It's just that perception thing. And yeah, the only problem I would say with that, John, is, uh, is that we we actually have, in time-wise with the club, more meetings on a quicker timescale. Mm. So we have monthly meetings and some ad hoc ones no, as well. It. We've already had one this month. And we, we, we've got our, mm. our main meeting at the end of the month. So for us to turn around that would mean we have to do certain things very quickly, whereas the... the Fab Heritage Society Sports Club Committee, they're all quarterly. So obviously they have a little bit more time to assess meetings to make okay. it I mean, work. If it's feedback. a time issue, it's a yeah. time issue. Yeah. yeah, it's just a quite a lot of our stuff is actually we, we will deal with there and then mm. with the club. Um, we have direct with the engagement team. We, we have direct contact through myself, not everyone on the fans forum, but just, just sort of through yeah. through the chairs and vice chairs. We, we have direct communication and that suddenly for me in the last month suddenly changed how I'll... Oh, for you it will. For yeah. I, how <laughs> I communicate, yeah. yeah. Um, but to be honest, they're, they're very open and I know we're all, uh, this time of year, there's loads of, when's this coming out? When's yeah. that happening? When's this happening? So you do know, but you know behind the scenes things are happening and some things are out of the club's control when you're working with partners, when your contracts mm. are coming to an end and new people are coming in to do new contracts, you know that's there. Mm. But it's not as though they're doing it deliberately to delay things or make it as late as possible, but you understand the fans' frustrations as well. Um, but we obviously always make sure, like, can we get an update on this? Can we get an update on that? It's not just in our meetings. That's day-to-day, mm. -day, sometimes week-to-week. -week, you know, so we, we are constantly updating and, uh, you know, we will, we will communicate as best we can. As I say, website, 
put it under consideration and, and uh, maybe we'll do that. Our new members won't be in situ till the end of August. Yeah. So that's there's always a couple of months of a little bit of uh, yeah, I mean, the lapse in the summer. Yeah, I mean, this is success, if, if that's the right <laughs> word, if a fan's form isn't going to stand or fall about whether yeah. you've got a website or not. <laughs> yeah. um, it, and, but it, it is, and we often talk about the, on the channel here about um, changing perceptions easier than changing reality yeah you know and, and and certainly there's a lot of caution and a lot of the fan base about both the fab and the fans forum of are they more closer to the club than they are to the fans and changing that perception will help right yeah. um and I, I think i said um, earlier on about what's the plan for the year and and clearly the last season of goodison park you will get a lot of inbound stuff yeah and, and perhaps people don't see that about the fans form when they say, mm, you know, I read the minutes and not that one's, well, guess what? This guy's just become cheer and he's found out that actually every man and his dog, and they're going to know more now because yeah. they've seen your face. <laughs> because people will go where they think they can get help, yeah. but only when they want help, yeah. right? And, and, and the number of people who vote for the fans forum members is way too low just like it is for the fan advisory board. And it's like we just had a general election. Yeah. If you don't use your vote, yeah. you don't get to complain about the people who get elected because yeah. you had it in your hands and you didn't do anything. Yeah. So so I would encourage people, if you want a fans exactly. forum that is better than it is now, whatever that yeah. means to you, yeah. get involved. Yeah. That's the thing, get involved. Um, we'll wrap up, but a couple of things really, always two things, right? <laughs> One of those is, you can use Toffee TV whenever you want. You can have a surgery if you want, come in every month, whatever, yeah. bring some of your mates with you. We can even make it interactive. We do live shows where people ask live questions, all that sort of stuff. So the platform's here if you want to use it. And we've made that offer in the past and stuff. And again, again, people, you need to remember these are all volunteers. They're not paid. They're doing it for the love, right? <laughs> Perversely, they're doing it for the love of you <laughs> because it's the fans that are trying to, you know, um, but it would be really interesting, I appreciate you've got an election going on, to come back at some stage at least and say, you know what, this is what we're going to achieve for the fans this year. Yeah. And, and not the easy stuff like, yeah, we'll be here to answer the phone when you don't know why your season ticket hasn't arrived. But the things that are dear to the fans, what, yeah. the, what they think is the most important thing, if we collectively as fans can, A, make sure our representatives know what those things are, and then our representatives because you've got to have the tactics and the strategy because that's fans forum, this is fan advisory board and working together to make the world a better place. Yeah. And if we can help, we will. Um, but all I can say is, and it will be in the description, by the way, we'll put it in the description. We'll let people know who you are. <laughs> if you want any tags putting in there, be it for social media or whatever, yeah. or by default, we'll just put the fans forum stuff in it. Yeah. And we'll certainly put the link in to how you can go and uh, put your money where your mouth is and apply to be a member of the fans forum and just maybe rob will bring you bring him with you know <laughs> you with him next time um you can have the final say say what you like thanks john yeah i mean i'd, lo I'd love to come back on and we've got a couple other members who are really open to doing you know as i said fan zone for example on match day so come on with you guys and and other great fan channels that, that we have so we're, we're always open to that and that's something i really want to get across so to sort of have a, a spread of communication because as you say i know you have a massive international following on here so you know you're wary that certain platforms are good for a certain type of the fan base but then there's others that are better for the fan base so we're, we're open communications always open um you know, uh, I, I, I in, I've worked in a hospitality, now leisure background, so I work in football at the moment. So as massively, you know, anyone, communication, feedback, anything, you know, we're there, we're open. Um, if we can't answer it for you, we'll try and chase and get an answer. That's not pleading for tickets like we had last week for Sligo game on Friday, though. We don't get tickets. Don't get tickets. <laughs> thanks. So apart from that. Yeah, thanks for that, Rob. He, what Rob's really saying is he'll help, but he can't perform miracles, right? And yeah. hopefully Sligo will be a great event. And so yeah. I think the documentary on Seamus is coming out oh, around yeah, the same brilliant. time as yeah. well. So everyone out there, I just leave you with one thing. If you remember nothing out of this, right, remember, look in the description and you can become a member of the Fans Forum if you put yourself forward and they pick you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks.